really do temples and shit. I'm not interested in temples and museums. Like, I walk gangster fucking neighborhoods and fuck with locals because I look funny and they love that shit and I love it too. I'm just gonna, is, if I curse, is that a problem? Oh. sick of it and was really stressed so he quit and he's traveling around Southeast Asia just really broke and doing yoga and I was like this guy is living my exact life it was crazy we were just talking and both blown away by the fact that our stories are exactly the same and now he's in India he's in Bangalore and I told him if you're in Bangalore I would really like to talk to you he's who I wanted to be like five years ago he was this big shot in fashion at, I think he was doing fashion advertising. And he was like at all the New York Fashion Week shows, you know, and designer clothing. And that's like who I wanted to be. Where do I start though? Because I'm super ADD. Yeah, first, um, I guess I'm super interested in your fashion background. Yeah, because yeah. honestly, growing up, like, you probably had the job like I dreamed to have. I've loved clothes and fashion my whole life. I dress silly no matter my whole life where I go kind of thing. So all my friends in Philly and New York were sort of fashion people anyway. You know, if you're going to work in fashion, you're going to live and work in New York kind of thing. And so in 2008 or whenever this was, right, Digi, digital, digital, digital is on its way. And while I don't have a professional history there like I just am good at that shit I speak the language it's just something I always took to really quickly so I started working for anthropology and was doing like you know their digital media web merchandising catalog shoots stuff like that kind of thing yeah crazy it was fun you know you have to make the decision quite immediately of whether you want to stay with a brand or go agency because it's two very different worlds and so I decided to stay brand and uh, I just interviewed a bunch and ended up working for Cynthia Rowley. I mean, she's a big designer for 20 years now, but like behind closed doors, there was like nine of us who worked there. You know what I mean? Like an international CFDA fashion brand kind of thing. So, you know, now we start the path of the 80 hour week. I didn't really care because like I was just so happy to be back in New York. I was so happy to be in a career path that was back like feeling quite fulfilling kind of thing. So. I was, and I sort of love a hustle, I just do, you know, that shit is just in me. So I started looking at agencies, and I just got picked up by one, like, immediately. That was sort of the game changer, because, you know, I, I maybe, maybe I was, I was, like, getting a little too dramatic too quickly there. Maybe I was clocking, like, 65, 70 hour weeks at Cynthia, because then when I went agency is like when it literally became 80 at the desk and then 20 in bed you know what I mean just like and I'm not even being cute like I'm being fucking literal when I say this you know what I mean like I got to the office at 8 I left at 10 I ate on the walk back to my apartment got in bed opened my laptop because the thing is like in the way it's like we were saying with social media you know what I mean that turns on at 5 p.m. that's when everyone goes home and does all their stuff so that's when my day starts you know I've been at my desk from 9 to 5 but now I gotta launch the campaign on Facebook and there's the Twitter chat at 10 and, you know. Weekends. Exactly, and so-and-so has a following in Europe, so that means I have to do it at this hour of the night, you know what I mean? Like, it just gets fucking crazy, like, really quickly. And, uh, you know, I travel to LA, we have an office in LA. So, I fly to LA for work, I don't feel good on the plane, I thought I was just sick kind of thing. I get to the hotel room, I have a call, you know, go to the LA office the next morning, have a call with Superga early in the morning, don't sleep at all, and wake up and I'm like really tired and really confused what's going on, and I get on this call, it's like me, the CEO of the agency and the brand, and I'm just keeping my mouth shut because like I don't feel too good and I'm a little tired, and then like, you know, it's my turn to start talking. And I literally, not, I start not making any sense. Like I start going, and I just like looked at the phone and like was shaking and was like, 
this is serious. So I just like hung up the phone and I ran downstairs and was like hospital. And they put me in a taxi and I got to the hospital and I walked into the emergency room and like I remember my eyes rolling and then I had a seizure and I woke up like three weeks later after being in a coma. Like I was in a stress induced coma for almost a month. Holy shit. I know, crazy. The neurologists like being like, you need to take this seriously. Like the fact that you were in a hotel room by yourself, if you had had the seizure there, like the brain would have swollen through the skull and I absolutely would have died. And I did the same thing. I'm like, you're being dramatic, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no, we're not. Like you would be dead, you know, if that seizure happened anywhere else, but on the floor of the emergency room kind of thing. And I was just like, I mean, I woke up and I like had a beard and I was 20 pounds lighter and I, it was just like, where am I? What's going on? Kind of thing. All the doctors and neurologists were telling me like, you know, sh stress induced and you need to take this seriously. Take six to eight weeks, like blah, blah, blah. And I flew out of LA on Friday and was at my desk Monday morning in Manhattan. Like this didn't happen. This didn't happen. You know, like drooling, staring at the screen, like, and I tried to perpetrate that for a while because I was just scared. Like, I was nauseous for 25 hours a day. To this day, I don't understand how the cognitive brain issue dealt with, you know, gastro, whatever. But I was just so, so, so nauseous and I was so confused. I forgot, like, um, it's not like I forgot, like, a dramatic movie, like, I don't remember my childhood kind of stuff, but, like, my ability to retain short-term memory became like nil, you know, so proper names, proper nouns, names of people like that, things. So like I remember my childhood, but if you put George Clooney in front of me, I wouldn't be able to tell you that that was George Clooney. I'd be like, oh, I know his name, I know his name, that kind of thing. And so, you know, to one extent that's great, that like I didn't forget my whole life kind of thing. But as I stated, right, the kind of guy I was, like a, a boss, an analyst, a guy who can see the forest through the trees, optimize, energize, boom, boom, boom. For me to now, not even mid-sentence, but mid-word, forget what I was saying, was just like, oh, brutal, you know, just, I didn't take that well. I just kept trying to pretend it wasn't sort of real. So I just kept working and working and, uh, you know, after like two or three months, or maybe it was longer than that, maybe like even four or five months, you know, like the CEO of my agency and I were really good friends and I appreciate him because he sort of did for me what I couldn't do for myself, <laughs> which was uh, sit down and he's like, this is enough, you know what I mean? Like you need to stop, like you need to figure something out because it's just not getting better. My memory retention wasn't getting better, the nausea wasn't getting better and stuff like that. And I just didn't want to admit it, so like it took someone else to sort of, you know, make the game-changing moment for me, which now I'm really humbly grateful for. And like, I had never in my life done a yoga pose, heard of yoga. I mean, I've heard of yoga, don't get me wrong, but like, it wasn't love or hate. It's not like, oh, I've heard of yoga and that's lame, or it's not like, oh, I've never heard of yoga. It was just like, whatever. It was never even on my radar. Like, you know, I'd go to the weight, the gym and lift weights or do cardio and this sort of nonsense, but I don't know. And I mean, like, this is the part that I struggle communicating. Even with travelers that I meet, we talk about ourselves and how we got where we are thing. Like, I just have no idea. I mean, like, this shit came out of the clear blue sky. I mean, literally, you know, like, I could have chose any path, or I could have gone anywhere, done anything. I could have, you know, stayed on my parents' couch for a fucking year, you know, go to Europe and holiday or whatever, but, I mean, out of nowhere, I was just like, yoga, like, yoga, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, like, seek some peace through yoga. And decided to just, like, look into India first, of course, you know, like, the home of yoga. And at that time, the embassy in New York, after 10 years of being whatever the other um, agency was that like the embassy sort of defaults to deal with it, had recently changed to a new agency. So you know me, I do obsessive internet research before I do anything kind of thing. And there are countless, countless websites and forums about how everyone's sending their passport in and not getting it back. Two months later, three months later, not getting it back. So I was sort of heartbroken again, like I thought I had this like, you know, existential, you know, <laughs> awareness, yoga is the path. Yeah. 
and then India seems to be like not an option. And then I just like did some more research and talked to more people and they were just like, there's plenty of like ashrams and temples throughout Southeast Asia sort of thing. So then the trip became not an India trip, but a Southeast Asia trip. And you know, I, I, I wanted to have some base before I got there. Like this whole free spirit hippy dippy shit was lovely and all, but like I needed to have some path at least. So I wanted to have like, you know, I wanted to know where I was going. So I found a Shivananda ashram in Vietnam and decided like I would just start there and get some intel there and let the path sort of unfold from there. And so, you know, the thing that is so remarkable about this too, like, you know, so I get ready for this and like I get rid of my apartment, you know, my girlfriend and I decided to sort of part ways, nothing dramatic, love each other dearly, but like I just wasn't the same man after that happened and like I needed something to change and blah blah blah, you know, fast forward. And so like I get rid of my apartment, I put all my shit in my parents' basement, I break with my girl and like I book this one way ticket, you know, like as dramatic as this can possibly be. You know, I show up with JFK with my backpack and like <laughs> You know, I show my ticket and they're like, lovely, where's your visa? And I'm like, oh no, silly, I'm gonna do visa on arrival. And they're like, no, you're not. There's no visa on arrival for Vietnam. And I was like, ah, you know, like, no, no, you must be mistaken, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no, no, you must be mistaken, blah, blah, blah. I was like, shit. And I'm like, I mean, literally heartbroken. Like, I just, you know, I'm asking a million questions. I'm like on the verge of tears. They're like, you can go to the embassy. It'll probably take like a week or so. Like, I don't even have an apartment to go back to. You know what I mean? The like, and this fucking dude in a uniform who's loading the baggage behind the guy at the desk onto the belt is looking at me through this whole conversation. I'm potentially gonna start crying when I tell this story because I start crying almost every time I tell this story. And like, so I turn around and walk away and he, I see him and he leaves, he exits and comes and takes my hand, random dude grabs my hand and he's like, come with me. And so we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk up the escalator, walk, 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 like away from everything to like a big, you know, like warehouse door. And he pulls out his phone and his phone is, the, it, the writing is in Vietnamese. And he starts to make a call and he's like, my friend tourist agent, my friend tourist agent, you wait here, you wait here. And so he goes away. I'm like getting goosebumps as they tell it. So he goes away and he come, you know, I'm like standing there. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. I'm just like humming and hawing, but like anything is worth a chance now. And so he comes back out like 20 minutes later with a faxed piece of paper for a visa. And I'm just like, and he's like, I don't know. I don't know. We try, we try. I was like, okay, whatever. So, you know, I fill it all out, fill it all out. And I give it back to him. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I let you know. I let you know. So I just, I sit there and it was literally over half an hour that I'm just like sitting next to a warehouse door in JFK with my fucking backpack by myself. And 35 minutes later, that fucker walks out with a Vietnamese visa for Keegan O'Brien. And I mean, I just like, I didn't even know what to do with myself. Like, I mean, I like, you know what I mean? Like every level of that like the fact that i was so uninformed and the fact that like he was fucking loading baggage at the gate and overheard and decided to stop what the work he was doing to come hold my hand literally and like through his friends you know like help me with this situation having no idea the gravity of like what this situation even was for me you know that like I'm seeking peace and healing. I'm turning my whole life around, you know, kind of thing. Like, so, so, so remarkable. And I go back and I get on that fucking plane, you know what I mean? And like, all of this starts, this path of like, yoga and meditation and, I mean, it's just remarkable. I mean, it was, it took a couple months, but I also remember like, you know, emails with friends and Facebook nonsense and all this. And I started getting all these emails like, case you sound like yourself again you know what I mean like because that's the thing like it's hard for me to communicate but aside from having lost memory there was this really incommunicable thing that happened where like identity and self was lost and that sounds like weird and hippie soap opera Oprah whatever the fuck but like it's true you know what I mean like I didn't have the same hobbies I didn't think the same way I mean I used to be a 
gangster, like loving spiritual creature, love to laugh, love to help a motherfucker across the street, like you name it kind of thing. And I became so apathetic after this happened. Apathy was like the word, you know what I mean? Like I just didn't really care, not ill will at all, but just like absence of interest or care in sort of everything. And for someone like me who had been so the opposite of that, I mean, that was heart wrenching. And like all the things I used to know about how to change that, you know, like when I was like trying to recover from the drug problem and such, like spirituality is what changed me. It made me an open minded creature. I believed in unconditional love and humility and things like that, you know, like it was a real game changer for me. And I just didn't understand now that, like, I don't know how to communicate this, but like those spiritual practices changed my life. And I went to try and access them now, and I biologically couldn't spiritually access them, which was really confusing for me, you know what I mean? Because of a neurological situation, which is cellular, biological, whatever, I was struggling with like a spiritual sort of nature that I had lost. And so, you know, everything about it frustrates me. The fact that it's happening frustrates me. The fact that it doesn't make sense frustrates me, you know, like, so the, you know, like, the thing that is so remarkable about this, you know, like, I sought out yoga, but just the travels onto themselves, like, yes, and ashrams and the mindfulness of meditation and the asanas and all of this played a part, but like, just the travel too, you know what I mean? Just being around, like, like, I don't really do temples and shit. I'm not interested in temples and museums. Like, I walk gangster fucking neighborhoods and fuck with locals because I look funny and they love that shit. And I love it too, you know? Like, I mean, people just literally run up to me and laugh in my face. And then we high five and we hug, you know what I mean? Like, because they're just like, man, you look funny. And I'm like, I know. Like, but look what's happening because of it. Like, you know, like. A fucking bestie every block is the joke, and, you know, like, I'm just, you know, like, so many sit down and have tea, and we don't speak any English, it's just giggling and high-fiving, and, you know, I mean, just remarkable, just absolutely remarkable, and that's the kind of stuff that, like, you know, kind of lit the flame again, you know, like, yeah. not, like, you just it's impossible to be apathetic in that lifestyle in that situation you know when there's just like such like a i don't know like i said it was a combination of the two like it was this silly day in day like it was the, a morning mindful get your mind and spirit in place you know through like meditation and yoga and then like then enter into the day sort of thing with like an open mind open eyes open heart and like what comes into the picture when you are like looking for that or seeking that out. I mean, it's remarkable. I mean, it really like, I struggle even like mindfully communicating how remarkable it is because I mean, once your eyes are open to like how lovely people can be and like, I mean, look, I've been traveling for a long time. I had savings, right? When you work fucking 90 hours a week, you don't get to spend much of that money. So like this trip started because I had savings. It's been 15 fucking months. So there's very few savings left, but I've taken to couch surfing and stuff like that, which is like, don't even get me started on that topic, life altering. But the nature of that, you know, is like exactly what this is like, you know, sometimes I have like a gut check if I should feel guilty, you know, or like, you know, I am like the white Westerner, like, shouldn't I be paying for, you know, sh don't I have the responsibility because of the privilege that I have access to and the entitlement that is afforded to me, you know, kind of thing, like, and when I just come to like small towns and, you know, people bring me into like literally their huts and like insist upon feeding me meals and taking care of me and letting me stay with them and just that kind of stuff, I mean, Oh, you know, I mean, that just like changes your whole spirit, eyes, world, everything. I mean, that's a joke now. It's just like, I have no idea what I'm going to do when I get home, but I cannot wait to make enough money to fly all of these motherfuckers to New York and just take care of them. You know what I mean? Like, I just like, you know, I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of the pay it forward instead of the pay it back thing. I think that is like the most mindful way to go. And so many of the people that I've met who have been so lovely to me believe in sort of perpetrating that as well. But 
you know, I love these fuckers. Like, I'm going to find a way kind of thing. Because everyone wants to come to New York, but it's expensive and visas and all this nonsense. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, the care that has been taken of me in, like, the past six months especially, when I really just started couch surfing sort of constantly and just living with locals and not doing, you know, the hostel and the westerner part of town thing and just, like, living in homes, you know what I mean? Helping with chores, be sitting at dinner, and you know what I mean kind of yeah. thing. I mean, it's just remarkable. I mean, it has completely changed my perspective on, like, life. You know what I mean? Like, this shit is so dramatic when I hear it coming out of my mouth, but, like... I'm just being dead fucking serious, you know, like, it's just remarkable. So like, you know, there's like a whole mindful path for me in this, you know, like, I, you know, like, I I sought yoga and that's why I left and participate in this and like, what has been provided for me as a result of that is so much more beyond, you know, I wanted to touch my toes and be able to, you know, like have a mindful moment here and there kind of thing. You know, and like take care of body, but also be, be like take care of self and spirit beyond that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've done 40 minute cardio and weightlifting, and that's fine and all, but like, I just wanted something that was like a little more mindful. But I mean, the path that seeking yoga has sort of laid out for me now is just remarkable. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And, like, I go through, like, waves now, too, you know? Like, the past month, I've been couch surfing nonstop from Nepal to Bangladesh down the coast of India kind of thing. Did you stay with Deepesh? Did you get my dude? Did you go to Kathmandu? No. Uh, He's, like, one of the only couch surfers. The wait, the... In in, um, in Kathmandu, he's, like, the only couch surfer available in the Kathmandu area. He's the only one that says yes. Would yeah. he, was he Nepali? Yeah. Oh, because yeah. there was like a Whitey McGee there too who was hosting. <laughs> really? But I don't know. I don't, sometimes I don't, I don't know. trust Whitey McGee. Yeah, so. I know. Yeah. No, he's he's Nepali. Yeah. Nice. But. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, continue. continue. Yeah, no. So just like, what was I saying? <laughs> Down the coast of India, you've just been couch surfing. Oh, right, 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 right. And so like. You know, because of, I think it's twofold, because of like mind and memory, neurological memory retention things, and because of just like self ADD things, like I am not very good yet with holding myself to self practice. Sometimes I'm really good at it, mindful, if I have the time and have the thing to do and have the space. But if I don't, you know, and like so many of the guys that I really, like Iyengar is one of the practices that I feel really strongly about and his philosophy and you know his whole thing is about like when you're in class you know he does he is really mindful it's almost westerner oriented right so that you can take to it quickly and you don't get frustrated kind of thing but dot 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 the point is to get out of the studio the point is to be mindful and practice yoga by yourself Mm -hmm. kind of thing and so like I'm, I'm hip to that like I get it I totally get it But, dot, 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 for me, you know what I mean, like, for neurological and spiritual reasons at present, I need it to be a participation thing. You know, I need to be participating in yoga. I need to be participating in class. I need to be in the environment. Like, right now, just for today, you know, right now, like, waking in the morning and just, like, going through asanas by myself is not what I need you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. so when I do this sort of travel I can be sort of abstinent from the practice which is uncomfortable and I'm I'm really not comfortable and I'm trying to figure out you know like where the in-between sort of lies so now you know I'm gonna go on a spell of like bhakti ashrams kind of thing you know just like put myself in the environment mindful environment for quite a bit of time and just like practice 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 and that was always the intention with India too you know like I have my whole life to like travel India but like I came here because of the incredible assortment of you know what I mean yogic practice and abilities to sort of have a really thoughtful, mindful, personal experience in ashrams and temples and stuff, you know, and not just like, you know, hot flex yoga in a class nonsense kind of thing. So like, I'm, you know, I'm, both things are providing such incredible, like, healing, so it's just 
ha- you know, it's silly to say, but it's almost hard to know which path to walk at whatever time, you know, like, yoga is what got you here, like, don't forget that, son, so, like, you know, keep practicing, like, yeah, this yeah. wasn't, like, a cute yoga moment, and now it's over kind right. of thing, like, this shit saved your life, and it fills your heart, so, like, I want to stay mindful to that, but... I'm on the other side of the world with lovely fuckers who giggle, you know what I mean? And like, I want to participate in that too kind of thing. So it's interesting to be in this experience and like find a way to sort of reach both. Because, you know, I can't even, I don't even want to begin to worry about what yoga looks like for KOB back west, you know, like, I mean, it's on my radar to be mindful of now kind of thing, but I have no idea what I'm gonna do with myself. Like, I, I don't think I can live in the United States and not live in New York City. And if you live and work in New York City, like, that shit cray, you know what I mean? Like, there's just no other sort of communication of what that lifestyle is like, so. It's like, I don't know if I should be mindful now, figuring out ways to you know, foresee how my yogic practice will be a reality when I get back to New York, or, you know, like, we're not there yet, you know what I mean? Like, we're in India, practicing yoga, like, let's just pump the brakes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And because there is, like, an asset and a liability to both, you know? Like, I don't think me thinking about New York is, like, me not being in the moment and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to set a path while I'm here that leads to a self-practice that makes sense in crazy New York City. You know what I mean? Like, there is a certain amount of even spiritual accountability that I would like to be cognizant of, you know what I mean, in this. And not just be like, oh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, and then get to New York and feel really confused, you know, of like, how, you know, you know, couch surfing unemployed in India and working, you know, 60 hour weeks in Manhattan are two very different experiences kind of thing. So, like, I'm not going to freak out about it, but I like to just sort of keep it on the radar. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, also, too, like, I did, I was in New York for like a, for like two weeks in August. And, like, I went to, you know, I went to some yoga classes in America, New York City. Like, you know, in New York, they're, like, $25 a class kind of thing, which is I can't even afford. But there's one place, of course, in the East Village on St. Mark's where it's, like, pay by donation. So that was sort of my only go. And I win. And, like, you know, to its credit, it is a pay by donation, which is a very mindful thing for New York City to do. Because, you know, yoga is the bee's knees in fucking New York City now. It's, like, everyone's workout and this, that, and the other. You know, a pair of yoga pants is like $89 oh, kind know. of thing. But, you know, like, even, you know, like, whatever. Like, they were kind of mindful, and I appreciate that, but there's still, it was like a really body-focused, and that's fine, you know, because I don't want to perpetrate. Like, I, I came to yoga for physical reasons, so I don't want to try and sound like some fucking guru now, like, you know, because it is important to me. The body is as important to this practice to me as the mind is kind of thing but i mean the most remarkable experiences i've had to date are when i am the youngest whitest person in a class where the instruction is not in english i mean that shit is a game changer because like all that old self of like am i doing it right am i doing it right can i improve can i go higher can i go farther you know what i mean like Uh, there's no room for that because I just have to like focus on what's going on like I can't overanalyze you know mentally because physically I just need to sort of keep up and be mindful of what's going on I'm there you know with fat 60 year olds (laughs) who are there not to burn calories they're there to you know fulfill the mind and spirit kind of thing I guess that's just such a sort of lovely connotation to have as much visually as spiritually in a class you know like Mm -hmm. Because I caught myself. I caught myself in the East Village. You know what I mean? I caught myself looking. Like, what's he doing? You know, what's... Blah, 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 you know, like, maybe I can get my leg higher. You know, like, blah, it's exactly what I don't want this practice to be. You know, like, I just don't. Like, yeah. it is... It came to me in the most humble of manners. It has healed me in the most humble of manners. Like, 
it's just so important to me that like yoga stays a really humble practice of self and not some cheeky fucking hip experience. You know what I mean? What it is like, in the States. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. What it is in the States. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of other yogis who feel just like me in New York, and it's right. just a matter of this, that, and the other kind of thing. But you know, far through the trees again. But the ones that you know you see the most of and get the most attention, and this, that, or the other. Right. This, you know, Uber. It's like the soul cycle yoga kind of, you know what exactly. I mean? Like kind of scene. Yeah. I put my cigarettes in here because when I open this box, it makes me happy. So I don't feel like the cigarettes are dangerous for you. It's out of my head. I have some stuff here. 